going on, everyone? Welcome back to another AWS On Air. My name is Aaron Hunter. I am a senior technical trainer with AWS Training Certification. And today, I have two of my friends here with me. Well, three. Sorry, I think I forgot you again. Oh, my gosh. How dare me? Um, and my executive producer walking right past my laptop. How dare her? <laughs> my friends, Mahir and David, are here to talk to us. Uh, David, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone who's watching all? Yeah, of course. Hi, everybody. I'm a senior product manager with AWS Observability Services. Long time no talk, Aaron. Good to see you again. It has been a while. David and I, we go way back to the support organization. We used to work together. So, hey, David. Hello again. Mahir, how are you, sir? Hey, Aaron. Doing well. Thank you for having us here today. You, you're welcome. So, Mahir is a general manager for the observability team. Um, and I believe observability has four letters that are associated with it. Is that right? That That's right. Or four characters. O one one Y. Look, why, in why are you here today? Yeah, I've been in observability team for the last 10 years and 12 years in total with AWS. Super excited to be with all of you to introduce a new capability that we announced yesterday for CloudWatch Logs. I lost my mute button there for a second. I had to find it. CloudWatch logs, observability, integrating together. Now, I know observability is super important. Um, if you're an SRE, a site reliability engineer, you probably know about observability already. And CloudWatch metrics, for those who are new, uh, CloudWatch is our, it's, a, it's like a visualization service. And it gives you the ability to take all these logs and metrics and aggregate them together. And you can see dashboards. You can build out dashboards. I'm seeing so much so fast. That's not why you're here exactly. But can you tell us more about observability and how it ties together in the CloudWatch logs for our customers? For sure. Thanks, Aaron. So first of all, um, observability is a core capability for any application to run in production. And it, it comprises of metrics, logs, and traces that come together to really help you understand what is happening inside of any system. And specifically for logs, AWS has an offering called Amazon CloudWatch Logs. Amazon CloudWatch Logs enables you to centralize logs from all of your systems, applications, and services in a central, fully managed, secure, and highly scalable fashion. You can view all of your logs in a central place, create patterns, and analyze them, and also archive your logs for a long period of time for your security and compliance needs. And CloudWatch Logs also provides you capabilities using CloudWatch Log Insights to interactively search all of the data that you have stored with us over a long period of time. And just a few fun stats, Aaron. Uh, Amazon CloudWatch is used to monitor more than 9 quadrillion metric observations. It ingests more than 5 exabytes of logs. And when combined with Amazon Event Bridge, it triggers more than 32 trillion events per month. And just for some nerds out there, uh, some technologists have estimated that uh, all the words ever spoken by mankind would be equal to 5 exabytes. That's how much log data uh, that we store today. Uh, and for film fans out there, on the other hand, you could store 55 million 4K resolution films with five exabytes of logs or five exabytes of storage space. Which 55 is million 4K film. How yeah. long are those films? Can we talk about that? <laughs> two hours or two and a, two hours and fifteen minutes. So pretty, pretty, pretty. Oh smart. my gosh, that that's Super a lot of power. Uh, to be with all of you to announce this new capability, and then we'll walk you through a demo as well. Yeah, please do. So um, let's go ahead and if you are ready for us to bring up your your uh, screen, I think David is going to be sharing the screen today. Cool. Yeah. While David brings up the screen share, we'll quickly uh, walk through the details of the feature that we have launched. So yesterday we announced data protection capability in Amazon CloudWatch Logs. This is a new set of capabilities that leverages pattern matching and machine learning capabilities to detect and protect sensitive log data in transit. You can now discover, detect, and protect sensitive log data that is in transit across any of your applications and systems that is streaming logs to CloudWatch Logs. And this, this capability now frees operators and developers from all the operational overhead that is associated with building and managing their own tools to protect sensitive data. For example, using this feature, you can create an audit policy, and that will help you detect any sensitive data that you might have uh, sent in the system. And as part of the feature, when CloudWatch Logs detects the sensitive data, 
It will also report the audit findings in Amazon S3, Firehose, and CloudWatch logs itself. So you can create automated alerting and analysis capabilities on top of it. That is really cool, Mahir. And you know what? I, I have to tell you something. My friend Jillian popped in just to say hi to all of us and hang out today. Is that okay? Hey, Jillian, how's it going? Jillian's here to also learn about CloudWatch logs and observability. Uh, thank you so much, Mahir, for, for walking us through that. And, and showing us that, that David has some log groups set up. Um, David, can you maybe walk us through uh, more details about what it is that you have and that, what you're showing on the screen right now? Yeah, of course. So right now I'm looking at our log groups view within CloudWatch Logs. Um, and I want to walk you through uh, the attributes of a data protection policy. Um, so you'll see in this view, um, as you mentioned, I have some various log groups here. Um, but I actually have a data protection policy to define for one of my log groups here for the demo. And I'll walk you through some details of this policy and what's configured, and then some of the, the magic that data protection provides. Um, so you'll see within this data protection policy for this log group, I'm looking for what's known as a data identifier. So we have over 100 managed data identifiers. And you can think of these as various pieces of sensitive data um, that data protection can detect and mask when they are logged by your systems and applications and as those logs are ingested by CloudWatch logs. So we're detecting and masking the data in transit in near real time. So in this example, I'm looking for an email address. So I want to know, has an email address been logged to this log group in plain text? And if it has, I want to mask it. And as Mihir mentioned, we have an, what's known as an audit finding or an audit report. You can think of this as a detailed log of what data protection has actually detected um, for the relevant data identifiers that you've selected. In this view, we'll look at our log stream. So uh, just a quick hierarchical view. So you can think of a log group as a directory and a log stream as a subdirectory. These help provide some hierarchy and then there's some affinity um, you know, for various EC2 instances, they'll have their own log stream. Uh, different executions of, say, a Lambda function will have its own log stream. But in this example, I've just created one manually. And you'll see I already have some past data here. Um, so I have you know, previous data of log events that had email addresses. And then right now, we're actually going to create a fresh one. And you're doing this manually right now, right? But there's ways to do this automatically or maybe using like infrastructure as code to build this out and then have these streams pre or the, the groups pre-populated, right? Yeah, absolutely. So this is all a manual demo of how to create the log event uh, for just a real-time example. Um, typically, customers will have, uh, as, as Mihir mentioned, right, with almost five exabytes of logs being ingested, uh, systems and applications are um, sending log information to us constantly at very high rates. Um, but this is just an example for this demonstration. 55 million 4K <laughs> uh, resolution films on a five, what was it? There were so many words, exabyte storage space. This makes me think of that one reinvent when there was a diesel truck that drove onto stage. You know which one I'm talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, data protection capability and CloudWatch logs, observability, and being able to store all of this and also protect it at the same time. Why? Because security is our top priority and our customers are very uh, aware and, and, and they need this kind of functionality. So what we're seeing here is we have these log events, the log groups, and I also see Jillian is back again. Hey, Jillian. <laughs> oh, my internet <laughs> what just you? like I was like, just kind of crapped out on like some of this most exciting stuff. I know there's so many people who are just like, really looking forward to this feature and, and definitely exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And then so one other thing to show or a couple other things to show in this demo. So um, as I mentioned previously, I had some log events and then I wanted to show this live so you could see just how quickly things are detected and masked. So you'll see I created a log event um, that included an email address. Now, one of the things that we gathered from customers um, during our extensive working backwards was they wanted the ability to detect sensitive data as it's logged to CloudWatch logs, mask that data, but also especially for um, security engineers and other folks, have the ability to go in and invalidate that that data was actually sensitive, right? Um, it's one thing to have it masked, but you always need to go in and validate. You know, what is it? Was it actually a credit card number? Was it actually a, a person's PHI information? Um, and with that, 
we've created that exact ability. So by default, um, anybody accessing log data through uh, CloudWatch logs, and especially with data protection enabled, will only see mass data. But we have provided the ability through elevated IAM privileges or an attribute uh, logs unmask um, to actually go in and unmask that data temporarily for viewing and validation, as I mentioned. So this sounds a lot like um, some, some pretty powerful services or pretty powerful features. It seems like there's some pretty strong machine learning going behind the scenes here and, 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 and looking at it and saying like, hey, this is a credit card, this is a social security number or something. Do, do our customers have to do anything special to train their models for this? No, they do not. Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, we've, our, our technologies are constantly evolving, um, as are the models. So there's no pre-training that's necessary. The customer doesn't have to provide, you know, hey, this is my financial information. Could you go train the model on this? Um, no, that's all already been done for them in a fully managed way uh, with as little as effort as possible on their end. That's super cool. And yeah. let's say, like, once they get this data, sorry, go ahead, Jillian. Oh, no, go ahead, and then, and then I'll chime in. Oh, no, you go ahead. We can do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, this is fa fantastic. And I think one thing I, I definitely want to, I guess, like clarify it too, as I'm seeing this demo and it's clear about the logs, so I'm a solutions architect. And I already know that people are going to come to me and are going to try to use this for everything because I'm <laughs> dying to be able to mask PII, PHI data. Let me do it with my text data. Let me do it with my CSV or with everything else that I'm something I'd put in a database. And so maybe we can just clarify like, okay, this is, this is only for logs. If, because I know we've got Comprehend um, and people are a lot of doing with text to mask PII, PHI data. So can we just clarify like log, this is only for log data, right? That Great question, Julian. Yeah, that's a good clarifying point. Um, this is only for log data um, that is ingested by CloudWatch logs. Uh, we are not offering this as a data protection service for any and all forms of data. Uh, no, we are, we are only focused on um, system and application data, log data that's generated and ingested by CloudWatch logs. And we're optimized for those use cases, right? Uh, we're, we, we're not optimized for finding uh, sensitive data within some large column or blob of like parquet yeah. or something like that. Or um, I, was gonna, reason... I was gonna say, David, exactly. It's like when I'm teaching my classes and I'm saying, hey, there's a security engineering course and this would fall right within a, cl a class like oh, that. Uh, to call. say, hey, we have CloudWatch logs. How do we secure this confidential, sensitive data? And now we have data protection, uh, enable data protection through your CloudWatch logs. And what if you have data that's maybe at rest? And that's kind of where you're going with this, with like this Park A format um, mm -hmm. sitting in Amazon S3. And there's the right tool for the right job. In this mm -hmm. case, it's not going to help with that. But I would probably lean for toward another service. We all know what service we're talking about, right? <laughs> oh, exactly. Um, Macy would be able to help you there and some of the others as well. Um, and one other thing to think of too is, um, you know, what what log groups would I apply this to as a customer? Um, so let's say I'm a customer, almost uh, anybody that sells anything on the internet these days has some sort of payment processing, um, authentication services, and these are typically microservices. And with each one of those microservices, they would typically have a log group associated with them. So let's say I'm running a microservice that I know is processing payments. Um, I may want to know all of a sudden if that microservice is logging a credit card number in plain text um, or other sensitive information. So th that's why this data protection ability is really geared towards um, logs and the different use cases within the logging space and observability. Um, that's why we've bolted this in the CloudWatch logs. And one thing that is pretty cool, if I may chime in, um, is like, like David said, this is built specifically for CloudWatch logs. And what that means is you have very easy getting started ability with just a couple of clicks in our management console and an API call. You can get this feature working for you. So that means no models to train. There is absolutely nothing in the infrastructure side to manage behind the scenes. It just works at cloud scale. And here, I love how easy it, it was when, when what David was showing that it definitely is, you know, really simple to kind of get started. And then even when that actual end screenshot that we saw, okay, we, we've got the logs in there and we're able to mask the PII, PHI. What can people do with it next? Um, 
if they want to actually implement some type of action from it? Is that something that they can do within CloudWatch or what are your other what are your other things that you're seeing people can start to do with it afterwards? Great question, Jillian. So there's just a few things like David was mentioning, like I would figure out as a customer what log groups might be facing either request or reply responses from customer or it might be processing sensitive information and turn on this feature on those log groups. And then once you have them set up, the number one thing to do would be to visit our management console and look at the findings on the homepage that David is displaying and then set up some sort of automation. It could be automation using Amazon CloudWatch logs. It could be automation using Firehose or S3 to build a central portal where you can see all the findings and then take automated actions over time. One of the things I think that um, you might want to consider is automatically detect and alert that there is sensitive information and then engage the right operator or developer team that owns that part of the code and then have them stop emitting the data. That's one of the reasons why we focused on data in motion or while data is ingested. We wanted to make sure that we can detect it as early as possible in the processing path and give you the ability to turn that part off if you're leaking sensitive information. That's pretty powerful. And you kept using the word findings, which makes me think Security Hub. So are those findings available in Security Hub? Not today, but it's something okay. that we're going to be working on um, in the next few days and uh, coming. A um, lot of integrations across AWS services will be in our roadmap. Yeah, so what are some best practices um, really to be able to utilize this as effectively as possible? Yeah, so there's um, definitely some interesting things, right? So as I mentioned, we have over 100 uh, managed data identifiers that we support today. Um, but to enable accuracy to be as highly as possible, we recommend that customers only enable data identifiers that are relevant to their use cases. So examples there, right? So like we have data identifiers um, that are pertinent to sensitive information within the country of France. So if you're operating your services within France, you know, enable the data identifiers that are relevant for that region and don't enable everything across the board um, just to reduce the, the noise and potential for false positives. I love that you just called that out because I think a lot of the default for people is like, oh, why not be able to select everything that's available to me? Um, and it's not, maybe that's not the right, I guess there may be too much noise, I guess, <laughs> as you kind of called out. So I keep all my logs, all the logs. <laughs> like, like David was mentioning, right, that by default data is available to customers in masked format but we do have the ability to unmask the data. So one of the best practices could be that you could ensure that permissions for unmasking the data is well governed and unmasking is obviously disabled by default, but if there are power users in your um, environment that you might want to turn the unmask capability on, I think that's something um, in terms of best practices, something to pay attention to. Then another thing, Jillian, you mentioned, so you asked, you know, what are, what are some actual actions I can take, right? So. Um, what I'm highlighting here is you know, we built what we're referring to as kind of like the, the heads up display or check engine light for sensitive data within logs, right? So we have this view. Um, and as I created that log event with the email address, you'll see I have a sensitive data count here. So this is one, one early indication of like, hey, something um, sensitive has been logged. Another action you can take is we're also emitting CloudWatch metrics um, for these log events with findings, right? So you can also create a CloudWatch alarm for those, which can also then be used to trigger various incident responses. And then also to grab some more information, as I mentioned, we have this audit finding report. So again, think of this as a log of what um, data protection is actually finding in the log data that it's scanning. And within, uh, within that, I'll just show you an example of what that looks like and kind of the information that it provides. So as we mentioned before, um, you can send this audit finding to CloudWatch Logs. You can send it to Kinesis Data Firehose or S3. Allows a vast array of workflows from there with S3 and Firehose. And then also just within CloudWatch Logs itself, you'll see there's details here around um, where, the, where the log data was identified, what data identifier it matches, and then how many counts. You know, I think the the severity matters too, right? Like, uh, did I leak one email address or did I uh, leak 2,000 email addresses to my logs? And I, I think that can help folks understand the severity of their um, impact and then the actions they need to take for response. 
Wow, that's a really good call out. Um, so it's a lot of power. Yeah, it really is. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are definitely really excited about learning more about this. Um, so really, what's the base, best place where they can learn more and really get started? No, that's a great question. So we have, our, as usual, we have our What's New post out there that's circulating around. We also have an AWS News blog post for protecting data within CloudWatch logs. And then if, we've also added developer guides in our documentation, as well as API references. Well, they can't contact you directly, David. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can always contact me directly. Uh, I'm also <laughs> floating around reInvent all week. Uh, so if you have questions, I'm happy to meet in person and then chat about data protection or CloudWatch logs as a whole um, and observability is, itself as well. Um, and then Mahir mentioned the, the roadmap. Um, is that roadmap available anywhere? And if not, I, this is a double-ended question. If it's not available, how can they submit that feedback to you? So that way they can, you can hear directly from your customers. Oh, great, great question. Yeah, Go like, ahead, Mary. So, yeah, look, our roadmap is always evolving based on customer feedback and we would love to get feedback from all of you. So there are a couple of ways to reach to us. One is in our management console. There's a little feedback button. Uh, if you hit submit there, it'll reach our team in the backend. Uh, and then aside from that, obviously, Dave and I both have pretty active LinkedIn and Twitter profile. And if you prefer direct contact via Twitter or LinkedIn, we're happy to connect there, too. Sorry, we're having fun over here. I'm streaming live from the on-air booth. We're doing it from our laptops, a little behind the scenes. So that way everyone can see it. Um, but Mahir, <laughs> Brian, um, uh, David, and Courtney, Jillian, everyone from the team, thank you so much for being here. For, for helping us out to, to teach us more about this brand, brand new, super important topic around security, data protection, and observability. Um, so thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for your time and stay tuned for more from AWS On Air. Yep, thanks everyone.